I want to talk about um, CBA East Midlands uh, launching a project for our members and anyone else who's interested in taking part at our AGM this year, which is on the 28th of March. Um, okay, it's, it's a project organised by members of the committee, so we're all volunteers, and so we're trying to keep costs down as much as possible. Um, right. Okay, you probably all know CBA stands for Council for British Archaeology. Um, the National CBA is in York, and they have groups around the country of which we're one of them, we're the East Midlands group. And so, okay, essentially that's it. Um, okay, we cover five counties, so Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire and Rutland. And we're a, a charity, so we belong to the Charity Commission. Educational charity working to involve people in archaeology and to promote the appreciation and care of the historic environment for the benefit of the present and the future. That's our uh, mission statement, if you like. Okay, firstly, just a rundown of the sort of things we do. Uh, we run reports meetings through the year, maybe three or four, perhaps two sometimes. We try to go around the counties so that we can, you know, vary where we go and what sort of themes we have. Uh, this, this is a, a theme we had, food, glorious food. So this lady was a, someone we invited who was part of a Roman reenactment group and she came along with samples of food, which are rather nice, that we all had a go at. Typical reports meetings, we hire village halls in various places or community centres visiting speakers, uh, and we usually put on lunch for those that, that want it. Okay, so it, we, get, we get about up to, uh, up towards perhaps 70 people. Average is usually about 40 to 50 in any of our reports meetings. And in the summer, we arrange visits to places of interest around the region. You know, uh, this is Derbyshire, the Odin line, that's Mantor in the background. We have well, you notice the age group is sort of mostly 50 plus. And we have a lot of people involved. Some are professional archaeologists, some are professionals in other fields. And a lot of people are experts or very knowledgeable about the local area. So this is a tour about, done by one of our members uh, in the Peak District. Um, and then we go to other places like this is Masson Mills in Derbyshire, where we get guided tours by people at the visitor centre, that sort of thing. And again, we visit archaeological sites. This is um, Borough Hill in Leicestershire, where we're getting a tour there. But we wanted to do a bit more than this. Um, get the members involved in doing something more practical. This has often been what people want. Uh, something that wasn't fines based because, you know, what do we do with them? Who keeps them? You know, we don't have a, a building or anything. We're all just volunteers in our homes and we've got not, you know, fines were not something we needed. So Central CBA um, did a survey in 2012 asking all their regions, you know, members, what sort of things they would like to be involved in or what training they would like that Central CBA could provide or think about providing. And in our area, it came out that people were interested in the historical landscapes, uh, particularly ancient boundaries. So we thought, ah, perhaps we could do something, a project around that idea. And so the idea for the project was born then. We took our own survey of um, our AGM in 2013, and, you know, the results were promising. It looked like people might want to get involved. Okay, so the boundary project, as it says up there, the idea is, you know, the English countryside, a multi-layered patchwork. Each generation has left its mark and we're aiming to discover more about the countryside by looking at, that, at the ancient boundaries that define it. So in our area, in the five counties, looking at features in the landscape along the boundaries, um, walls, ditches, banks, hedges, etc., to gain a systematic record, and 
you know, ambitiously, is to produce a, a 21st century doomsday report for our area with GIS, GIS record and drawings and photographs. Okay. So the committee set up a subcommittee to try and get this thing off the ground. It's taken a bit of time. One, because we're all volunteers, so it's all in our own time. And secondly, because they, they knocked about quite a few ideas to begin with. Some of it was, can we get funding for this so we can pay? Um, it sort of founded on, well, the members of the committee are trustees of the charity and they can't really benefit from the funding and it sort of died a death. So it came to the point in 2014, it was right, let's just get this thing off the ground and get going. So we'll start a pilot project. And so we drew up, at this point I became involved. Um, we drew up what we wanted people to record in terms of features along the boundary. And a couple of local history groups uh, said, yes, we'll do it just as a, a pilot scheme. You know, we'll try it out. And so they went off in the countryside last, last summer, just a few of them. Um, while we thought, right, we need to set up a database <laughs> and make sure that people can input their data into the database. Okay. We wanted it to, have, to, to access it from the websites. Okay, a website. Now, e, uh, the East Midlands group, we have our own website. Um, but we decided that perhaps it's better to have the, the project on a separate domain. Um, there was talk of getting Central CBA involved, but we thought, actually, we'd like to be in control of what goes on. We'd like to be in control of what the web pages look like, how we interrogate the database. We don't want to have to say, can you do this for us and wait six months for it to happen? <laughs> you know, it's, we need to do this right, let's write it and get it up there. We wanted free, stable, well-documented software. Okay, so packages that were free, stable and well-documented. Security, okay, it's not a big issue in the sense that all this information that we're going to accumulate is, you know, open to everybody, but obviously you've got to think about malicious intent from some people. Uh, and then, of course, there'll come a point where we, the current committee looking after it, you know, we will pass on to other things and we might not be on the committee anymore in due course because people, you know, offices stay on for about five years at the most. You know, people move on, so it's got to be able to be maintained by someone else, someone else to pick it up and run with it. And low running cost in the long run. Okay. So, took out a new URL for the project. And in order to create the web pages, and the database, we went for WordPress as being a very easy to use package to set up a web pages. Apache to be the server and MySQL database. We took out what DigitalOcean, the company, call a cloud server droplet. It's really a virtual machine up on the cloud. And of course, they look after it and do regular backups, etc. Okay, so we had to set up the database with its tables and fields, uh, set up the WordPress pages, and then write some templates so that we could uh, enable people to input data and view data from the database. Um, decided that some of the local history projects in the past have involved collecting data and then one or two people sit typing it all in. Well, this has the potential to be quite a large project if it gets taken up happily by people. So we want them to put their data in. We don't want any one or two people to have to do it. So um, we decided to give a login using their email address and generate an encrypted password. Uh, and we'll record who enters data as well. So essentially, the data is inputted by those people who've been out in the field taking the, the records. So. So we're producing paper record sheets, or they can use the web page so that they can come home and then sit at the computer in comfort and enter the data, or they can do that in the field as well, because the, the web pages are responsive. Okay, this is just, 
It's not a full web page, it's just a little snippet of part of the web page, okay? And the thing on the left is a sort of snippet of the sort of questions we might, we will have on the um, paper sheets. It's only a snippet because you wouldn't be able to read it if I tried printing the whole thing. It's quite, the, the web pages, they're quite um, chunky, big print. And I wondered about this, but I asked other members of the committee, and then, well, actually, we're all in the 50 plus bracket. Big print is good, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Um, the main thing about this, obviously, you want to give people freedom to write, you know, free, free typing, but also restrict some things so that we don't get typing errors on, for example, parish names, adjacent parishes, that sort of thing. We decided that um, each feature would have a feature reference number made up of three letter codes of the parish and the adjacent parish, because if you go around the parish, then the adjacent parish changes, obviously, so you might, so you start with the parish, Aslockton, and then you might have, as you go through the features, several different adjacent parishes. Um, but people don't have to know what the codes are, but we show them what the codes are. So you select a parish and an adjacent parish and the codes will show up. The purple means you can't enter anything, anything in here and you don't have to, um, for example, but if, if you need to, that box will become white. <laughs> okay, so like for instance, the feature type, if you select other, that purple box at the bottom will be enabled and become white so you can type into it. The yellow box, the no, um, obviously the feature reference number, we don't want people to make them up. We've got to have it automated. So when they're ready to submit a feature, if the box is yellow with a null in it, if they press next, get next feature number, um, the question will be asked to the database, what's the next number for this parish? And then thereafter, it will, as they keep entering features, it will increment that number and they can forget about it until they change the parish name and then it will go back to yellow and they're going to think again. Okay. Another little bit. Um, we can, obviously, we can have spot features like trees. Or we might have a hedge, so a line feature. So again, if you uh, click on the line bit, the, the easting and the northing ends turn yellow, so you can type into them. And again, the yellow is a sort of indication, it's a, a warning. If you, we're asking for northings and eastings, as I say. So once you've typed six figures in, the box will turn white, so you know you're okay. <laughs> We're aware that uh, with a line feature, obviously, um, just got start and end point, which gives you a straight line, it may not be. In the future, we possibly allow people to put different points in for along that feature. For the moment, we think, well, that'll do, because if anybody's going to take that data into a GIS package, they can manipulate it there to move it along the boundary. So that will do for the moment. It's a work in progress, so we'll progress things as we go along and as people make comments. This is just another snapshot of another page. Um, yes, it's for editing. Um, select the feature, so it gives you the, the feature number, drop down list of all the features that are in there at the moment. I think I might have to modify that to perhaps split it, there, there are hundreds of parishes, I think we're going to have to split it into counties possibly, but anyway, show the feature and then it will show all the details for that feature. If you are the person that's entered that and you need to make some changes, you can do so. If you didn't enter it, then you're not allowed to make any changes, but you can view it. Okay, so if you didn't enter the data and you press save changes, it'll say push off chum, it wasn't you. Yeah. All words to that effect. Okay, we have a simple search at the moment. So one of the parishes, again, this is just a top half of the screen. There, there are 50 odd um, bits of data from our pilot study at the moment. And it's just a first pass at the sort of search we might do so that we've got the grid references, the feature code, what it is, and a description. Okay, we might change that and add more sophisticated searches as we go along. Okay, so, We've got a few more things we need to do to get ready for our launch. So we need, we are getting ready 
feature and summary sheets for as PDF so that people can print them out if they want to take those out into the field. We need guidance notes, they're nearly ready. We are heading towards putting, uh, you know, allowing people to use GIS stuff on there, so we need making available topographic maps. We've told, we realise perhaps the OS boundary line and vector map district are what we want there. Um, continuing development, well, again, we want to be able to give people data that they can use in GIS. Um, and we also want to start putting maps up there on the on the website. We'll probably give QJS training days in due course. Um, consider cooperative database for QGIS access. Um, this is a security issue that possibly we may end up with, you know, two databases, one copy of the other, so that if people are using GIS packages to access it, you know, it, it, it just extra protection against anything being corrupted. And, of course, people will be taking photographs, we want to be able to put images up there as well, that's the next step. As I say, it is a work in progress and we're heading towards these things. And finally, launches in a few weeks' time. Um, again, if we don't get it out now, then it's going to be another year. <laughs> because, you know, the summer's coming up, that's when people are going out. The AGM, it's a reports meeting, so it's a full day like this. AGM in the middle. We get a good attendance at the AGM, so there might be 70-odd people there. We're going to launch it and try and encourage people to go out. It's open not just to our members, but to... We have a whole raft of history societies locally in the five counties, and then any group that want to go out and call themselves whatever, you know, they <laughs> make up a name. They can do so uh, and take the data for us. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>